Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will be reviewing this Chonxi More One clay printer. I would like to thank Chonxi for sending me this printer to review. Personally, I don't have any experience with pottery making, but I have seen some cool videos on 3D printing with clay. Generally, commercial grade clay 3D printers like Lutum print really well, but they can also be quite expensive and can range from three dollars to $4,000 to $10,000. So I'm very interested in seeing how this $550 mini 3D clay printer works. Let's open up the box and see what's inside. It looks like we have a lot of parts and accessories. We have the printer, which is pretty much pre-assembled, the print head, two clay barrels, a NEMA 23 stepper motor connected to a gearbox, a lead screw, and a piston to push the clay out of the barrel, the cable for this motor, the power supply, some tools and screws, some clay samples, and two microwave kilns to solidify the clay model. The assembly is super easy, and I'll spend a few minutes going over it real quick. As the printer itself doesn't require much assembly, we will start with the clay barrel and stepper motor gearbox. First, remove the four screws on the aluminum mount, which is used to connect the barrel with the gearbox. Then, insert the lead screw from the back and put the mount and the screws back on. Next, screw on the rubber piston on the lead screw and secure it with the M4 by 20 millimeter screw. After that, we can grab one of the barrels and couplers. Screw the coupler to the tip of the barrel and the barrel screw on the mount. Connect the barrel holder with four M4 by 10 millimeter screws. I won't tighten it all the way as we still need to pack some clay before our first print. Okay, we can now mount the print head on the X axis. Use two M4 by 10 millimeter screws to secure it. Grab the clay tube and use it to connect the print head and the barrel. We still need to connect some cables. Let's start with the print head stepper motor. I will rotate it so we can see better with the camera. Grab the NEMA 23 stepper motor cable from the bag. One side connects to the motor and the other side connects to the connector at the back of the printer. Push it in and secure it. After connecting the power cable, the assembly is done. Let's turn on the machine. If you have any experience with 3D printers, this kind of menu should be quite familiar. Let's do some bed leveling to make sure all the axes and limit switches are working. As there is no bed leveling sensor, we will use the paper test method to do some quick leveling. The printer can move to five points of the bed. The recommended distance between the bed and nozzle is 0.3 to 0.5. I will just use a piece of paper and fold it two times. Leveling a tiny bed like this is easy. Next, we will do the challenging part. We will pack the clay barrel. First, Go to the tool menu, materials, and you can select to move the print head stepper motor, the clay gearbox stepper motor, or both of them. Since I'm going to pack the barrel for the first time, I will just move the gearbox to move up the piston so I can remove the barrel. Okay, let's turn off the printer and remove the barrel. I will use some of the packs of clay that came with this printer. It seems they are pretty wet and ready to use. I will mix and squeeze them a little bit and put it inside the barrel. In order to remove the gap from the clay and move them all the way to the bottom, I will throw the barrel on these magazines I put on the ground and repeat this process until it looks like this. Then I will put everything back and screw the barrel back onto the gearbox Make sure to do it slowly and not to damage the threads on the barrel. Connect the tube to the coupler on the barrel and the print head. Now we can move the piston forward to push the clay all the way through the tube. I used the maximum speed of 40 to move the piston from the top. When the tube was filled up with clay, I slowed it down to around 5. Once I saw some clay coming out of the print head, I slowed it down to 0.7 and let it extrude for a while until the clay is smooth and consistent. 
OK, we can clean it up and start a test print. I found a roll of plastic wrap that came with the printer, and I will also try to use it on the print surface. Let's print a sample G-code. I will start with a small vase. It's now homing the machine, just like all other 3D printers do. Then, it starts printing the first layer. As you can see, the layer line is pretty wide. It's around 1.5 millimeters. Let it finish and see how it looks. It finishes in around 23 minutes. Since it's printing at 0.5 millimeter layer height, it is much faster than the 3D printers that we normally print with at 0.2 millimeter layer height. Take a look from the top, and the inside of this face also looks pretty nice. I didn't expect that I could do my first print without any issues, as I have no experience with mixing and packing clay. Next, I will try to print a bowl. It has some bubble patterns on the surface, and I'm not a big fan of this pattern, but it still printed out okay. As you can see, there's a defective part right here. I actually had some air inside the clay, so the print had just puffed on the model and made this dent. After that, I will try a taller print, a hexagon twisted base. I actually failed twice on this print. In the middle of the print, the print had stopped extruding. Once I found out that the print head was slightly under extruded, I increased the speed of the motor to increase pressure to push out the clay. As you can see, I did that three times before I could finish the print. I think the clay I packed inside the barrel is not very consistent, so maybe some of them are harder or drier than the others. I will try again with a taller print and see if it can finish. This time, it's not bad. I only have to adjust the speed of the motor one time to increase the pressure, but the bubble of the clay really ruined the print. Let's play this back at a slower speed. When there is air, which creates a gap inside the tube, it just puffs instead of extruding clay. This created a hole here. In order to improve the print quality, I decided to repack the clay. This time, I added more water so the clay can be pushed out easier. I also tried to remove as much air as I could. Let's see what kind of results I can get. This time, I will print a bottle that I saw on their official website. After I repack the clay with more water, the extrusion is much smoother, and I don't have to change the speed of the motor to manipulate the pressure as the clay can be pushed out easily. This bottle took around 50 minutes to print, and this time, it just finished by itself without me having to change anything. And this is the best model I have printed so far. Finally, I will try to use the microwave kilns to solidify the clay. I just put my smallest face inside this kiln and heated it up in the microwave for 35 minutes. I saw some people on the internet who suggested it would be safer to stop it in 10 to 12 minute increments and give it a minute before starting it up again. So it would be best to do your own research and to only do what is safe for your own specific microwave. Okay. After 35 minutes and almost an hour for it to cool down, I can feel that it's harder than other unsolidified clay. But my mom was not that comfortable to see us burning all this clay inside the microwave, so we just tried one. Okay, let's talk about what I like about this printer, compared to the videos I saw of those commercial or industrial grade printers which print really nice but cost from $4,000 to over $10,000 for just a fraction of this price, this more one can print something similar just at a slower speed and with a smaller print volume. The fastest you can print at is around 40 millimeters per second and still be able to make sure the clay can keep up with the speed. So it's pretty good in terms of value. This printer itself is quite easy to use. It's basically a 3D printer, but instead of using a roll of filament, it stores clay inside the barrel and pushes it out with a more powerful NEMA 23 stepper motor. So anyone who has ever used a 3D printer should be able to use this. For a filament 3D printer, when the print fails, we are going to have to waste some filament, but for clay, just grab the failed print, mix it, and add some water if necessary. Then you can pack it back into the barrel to reuse, so this could also save you some money. 
unlike filament 3D printers, it doesn't need to melt plastic, so it doesn't use a heated bed or a hot end that requires a few hundred watts of electricity to generate heat. So, 3D printing with clay consumes much less power. In my opinion, the most challenging part of using this printer is dealing with the clay. If you have no pottery experience like me, you really need some time to figure out how to mix the clay, how much water you need, or how you pack it into the barrel to avoid air. If any of these steps go wrong, you may experience under extrusion or the print head may just stop extruding. But once you have this dialed in, it can deliver really good results like this bottle. I would like to suggest that the manufacturer can make some vacuum sealed barrels that are pre-packed with clay, so it's ready to print right out of the box. Most importantly, and guarantees that the print quality won't be affected by the clay packing skills of the user. The other thing is that playing with clay is a little bit messy, so 3D printing with clay may not be for everyone. But I did have some fun with this. If you like to try something new in 3D printing and are interested in this Tronxy More One Clay 3D printer, I left a link down below. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. My brother and I make a new video every weekend, so check out my channel on Mondays and you'll see something new. See you next week.